again, unlike the academic collection of Lord Stuartby, we have also a fabulous collection of gold coins. I mentioned that Lord Stuartby only had one Anglo-Saxon gold coin, and that was a tiny little Thrimsa. Here, in this sale, we have the opposite. We have the biggest gold coins produced in this country. This is the collection formed by Dr. Paul Broughton of English hammered gold coins. Uh, Dr. Broughton was passionate and enthusiastic, and he loved history. He studied at Cambridge. He said when he was at Cambridge, that really inspired him, especially to um, collect things from the Tudor period. He loved the 16th century. And so when he had the means, he began to form this collection of gold coins, inspired by the first Slaney sale here at Spink many years ago. Um, and having enjoyed them all these years, he's now decided time has come to sell them. We're very pleased, very pleased indeed, to have this collection. If you like large gold coins, then you will love this collection. We have, for example, examples of the sovereign coin, the large sovereign of 20 shillings, produced by the Tudors. Here we have one of Henry VIII. Magnificent coins with the monarch enthroned um, in all his uh, splendor. And not to be outdone, his daughters, Mary, known as Mary the Bloody, rather unfairly because I don't think she was anything like as bloody as her father. But anyway, his daughter Mary, who was queen after her sickly little brother died. Um, and she was followed by Elizabeth. And here we have a lovely sovereign of Elizabeth. There are all three of them, and they are splendid things. And they are probably the most handsome and the most eye-catching um, coins of the period. Um, and to have all three of them in a row like that is a splendid thing. You can admire the artistry, or you can get enthusiastic about the history of the period, or you can just like them for coins. Numismatically, they're very satisfying to hold. Not half as satisfying, some would say, as the even bigger triple unites. The unite was the pound piece, and these are, in effect, three pound pieces in one that were produced under Charles I. Hundred years later, and we're in the midst of the Civil War, Charles is in exile, so to speak, in Oxford. He's moved his court and he's moved his mint and they are producing coins in Oxford to pay the troops to fight the parliamentary forces. And these triple unites are the biggest denomination produced in England. This was clearly almost like a money of account. Um, you couldn't spend this, but it was worth three unites. And therefore, they produced a considerable number of them, quite surprisingly. We have here two. They have the same portrait of the king on the obverse, holding his sword and prominently wearing his crown. Um, but on the reverse, we have the different dates, 1642 and 1643. The 1643 uh, being the rarer of the two, although in this case the 1642 reverse perhaps the more lovely. It has the declaration, as it's known, Relig, Prot, Legi, Ang, Liber, Pa. The religion, Relig, Prot, Protestant, the Protestant religion, Legi, Ang, the laws of England, and most importantly, Liber, Pa, the liberty of Parliament. A curious phrase for the king to use, um, as he his enemies would say uh, he was not supporting the liberties of Parliament and he wasn't supporting the Protestant religion, um, but he claimed that he was, so this is 
propaganda. You have above the declaration, you have R Roman numerals, one, two, three, to show that it is a triple unite. And above the denomination, you have the plumes, known as the Oxford plumes, the plumes of the, uh, uh, now they're known as the Prince of Wales, very familiar uh, plumes, um, to indicate that the coin was struck at the King's Mint in Ox Oxford. Um, around the edge, exergat Deus, dissipenter inimici. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. That was the king's uh, fervent hope, that God would arise and scatter his enemies. Of course he didn't, and the king was executed. But a little bit of history if Dr. Broughton um, could do it all again, he said, he would collect them again, because there's nothing better than this. If you'd like to participate in the sale, it's on the 22nd of March. It's in the afternoon, following on from the sale of the first part of Lord Stuartby's collection. A very contrasting pair of sales to have uh, side by side. One sale full of tiny, silver, academically interesting and numismatically rare pieces, the other sale full of the most handsome and eye-catching flashy gold pieces that you could possibly imagine. But both in their way historically interesting and both well worthwhile. If you'd like to come and have a look at them, you're very welcome. The sale is online, the coins are uh, there to be admired online. Uh, but you'd be very welcome to come. Um, but above all, do participate in the sale on the 22nd of March. Thank you.